I guess that's it. Nice to see all of you here. My name is Piotr. I'm from a super hot team. We made a game called Super Hot, and also its wildly successful spin off Super Hot VR, which was, which was kind of crazy adventure for us because uh, most of the time when making Super Hot VR, we were uh, convinced that it's, it's not going to do, do very well. And it's, ah, oh, the game is lacking something. But we tried to make it, uh, make it as simple as possible so those people that, that put on those helmets, that, so they would understand this thing. And, uh, and that, this was apparently something uh, that, uh, that not many VR game developers did. So, uh, so the, the, the game was, uh, was, was widely successful, like it's a, it's a best-selling VR game, and if you haven't tried it yet, you totally should, because it's good. Uh, the team that made Super Hot VR is, is sitting, I see parts of them there, but there are also other people somewhere there, and like, uh, they deserve your applause, because that's good. Good job! <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, so we were thinking, uh, we had a wildly successful game uh, uh, and, a, and a kind of, and then also wildly successful uh, uh, VR spin-off, right? Where do you, do you go from that, right? It's like people keep asking, oh guys, where's the next game? Are you still staying in super hot? Like, is this all you can do? And I think, well, kind of. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting, right? Um, uh, like, I like this game. I, 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 I love this, uh, this, this core ideas of Superhot. The, when, so, when, so when Sonia from the Digital Dragons team, she asked me to do a lecture on Superhot VR, I thought, no way I'm going to do that. Like, uh, I, I spoke about it a couple of times, and I frankly believe that if you are interested in, uh, in design that's uh, in Superhot VR, then you should just play the game, you will see everything there. It's, it's a very simple game, uh, it works, and it, build, it builds on those very basic, uh, uh, basic VR principles we, we discover from all over the, uh, the, the games that are developed. So I thought uh, that I could do something that's, that's, uh, that's kind of interesting <laughs> uh, here, uh, here to show you. Uh, so I thought, um, what's like currently interesting for me? I'll, maybe I will show you the things that that, uh, that uh, we are working on, because the hard uh, the hard truth about things that that uh, that are a bit uh, different, are things that nobody is doing, which is the title of the talk: ideas that nobody is doing. F the thing with those ideas is, well. Sometimes there's a reason why nobody is doing that. Because they are not immediately, uh, immediately uh, doable, maybe they are not immediately uh, attractive, and maybe it just requires this, this bit of imagination that um, every industry kind of lacks. There is always this, this pressure in the, in, the, in the industry to do things as they are done. Like, I've heard that a lot of times, like, Piotr, this is not the way how you do things. This is wrong. And, well, you hear things like that, of course you do. And, uh, and if you're doing something that, that uh, uh, nobody else is doing, then, like, you have no frame of reference. But I, I deeply believe that the magical things that, uh, that interest us in uh, game design and, and you, you personally as game designers, those are things that are kind of interesting, right? So, uh, so uh, uh, without further ado, I will just launch a thing and start talk about it. It launches million years. Starting now. And will be very slow. And it's not very impressive, like, don't, 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 don't get hyped. This is works in progress. 
Ah, the aliasing sucks. And the mouse cursor shouldn't be here. So, when developing super hot, like one of our biggest uh, problems was animating those motherfuckers. It's um, like you can cheat your way through most of, uh, of uh, game development, and cheating your way through it is like the, the only, only proper way to do it. Like actually do this uh, industry standard things, this is, this is outrageously, uh, outrageous work that's not very fun. So, the idea I started with, and this is, this is kind of the start of this idea, is how to make those, those, uh, uh, those levels, those scenes in, in, in VR, those scenes in video games, right? You often have characters in the game, right? So, uh, and animating them, imagine like a, a, a simplest movie scene, right? So there's a... Um, uh, it's a VR action game, right? You get dropped right into the middle of the action, and uh, uh, you observe the scene. There is a guy sitting at the, uh, uh, at, the, at the table in a bar, and he's drinking his wine like this, and then he uh, looks at you because you're an intruder, and then he gets very angry and throws the glass at you, right? So. Doing a scene like that is, is possible, like, right? like people do those scenes. But the way you do those scenes is, um, uh, is kind of backwards, like totally backwards. It, um, uh, uh, first you need this idea, okay, this is a spontaneous idea, a guy is sitting uh, 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 at the table, he sees you, he, he, uh, he uh, throws a glass at you, right? This is... No, this is not, not like uh, uh, great filmmaking, but this is like the simplest piece of shit you can, uh, you can do. This, is, this, this should be simple. How do you do it in, a, uh, in your game engine? Like, it's, it's, it, it kind of sucks. You need to go outside uh, uh, to the animation program. You need to, uh, you need to uh, create this, uh, this animation. This animation, um, uh, it's not like you just, uh, uh, just work with raw movement. You have to explain the move to the animator, then he interprets it, uh, then, he, uh, then he delivers the animation, then you put it into the game, then you, uh, uh, then you start... Uh, uh, start iterating on it. In the meantime, the animator was, is, is working on something different, uh, uh, and your spontaneous idea, like this, 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 whoa, let's make this guy that sits at the table, at the table, like exciting stuff. Uh, uh, suddenly, uh, this spontaneous idea that just takes uh, half a second to, to, to invent, right? This, this, this tiny, tiny moment. Uh, suddenly, this idea takes a week to develop. And whenever I see a pattern like that, I, s I know that, well, of course you can do a guy sitting at the table. It's kind of easy. But you need to have a very well defined what you want to do, which absolutely cuts off any improvisation. And uh, the best things we were uh, uh, always doing in a, uh, when working on video games this was just this plain improvising. Uh, suddenly, when tools are easy and they are available, then you can, uh, uh, then you can uh, just, uh, just have fun and invent something stupid. Uh, and I really love doing stupid stuff, because everybody is doing smart stuff. And, uh, and it's this, uh, this kind of obvious way, right? But, uh, um, uh, uh, when you're looking for stuff that nobody is doing, and that's, that's kind of interesting, like I haven't seen those things yet, right? Then, uh, then maybe there is uh, another way to do them. Maybe there is some, uh, some, uh, uh, some other idea there, right? So, I wanted to uh, improvise moments of uh, uh, gameplay moments uh, for VR gameplay. Um, this is me. Like the black guy is me, and the red guys, well, red guys are also me. <laughs> I, I recorded those movements. And they are, uh, uh, oh, the bullet. Oh, this is my favorite part. 
look at the way he looks at this gun. There's a longing for this gun. But then he discovers, in a second, it's not going to happen. He stares for a second, then he changes his mind. There's probably someone behind my back. Oh my God, it's happening. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, this is what I call a bieda mock-up. Uh, because, like... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I like, I like the, 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 the name Bieda mock-up. Uh, so it's a poor man's mock-up uh, system, right? And it's, uh, in every case, it's a mock-up that sucks. Like every animator says, dude, those bones are kind of wiggling. You sometimes lose tracking and it, uh, and it doesn't, uh, doesn't work well. There's lots of problems with it. But what you gain from it is like this turbo immediacy. Like, like turbo immediacy. You just, um, you are in VR. You put on the suit. <sighs> okay, let's say here is a table. So here is a chair. I could grab a chair. And just showcase it. So, you're sitting in a chair in VR, and you have your body, right? You look, you look down, you have hands, you have legs. Uh, this is a body that you can record. So, uh, let's assume the player is here, right? Somewhere here, we have some kind of recording, um, recording gizmo, right? We record towards this gizmo, right? So, I, I'm sitting at the table, and I say... Oh, blah, 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 blah and I grab my glass, and then the level starts. And I see the player appearing. I take a sip, but I don't finish my sip. I look at the guy, and I throw, uh, and I throw a glass at him, right? And, this is, uh, and, then I, and then I jump up and start like hitting him, whatever, right? Uh, 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 so this is, the, uh, uh, this is the way I imagine, like we should make those levels. And, uh, uh, and I'm all for this, the spontaneity of it, right? Uh, uh, this is fun. This is something that you, uh, uh, that you can just fly away with your imagination. Uh, uh, basically, you uh, do whatever move you like. You click, and then you see a copy of yourself doing exactly this like it was a different person. And this is, this is kind of a magical thing. This is kind of a magical thing, although, uh, uh, indeed, it requires this, this, uh, this, this mock-up suit. So, <laughs> kind of, it's not a market-ready technology, but uh, it's still a, a market-ready tool. Uh, <laughs> kind of market-ready. We, we want to develop it. Uh, so, um, uh, so, this... Uh, um, um, uh, you probably uh, saw the possibilities of, uh, of cheap mock-up systems. There are quite, uh, quite many right now. There is this kind of, uh, there's this uh, very cool inertial mock-up systems. They are kind of cheap, and I, by kind of cheap, I mean still kind of expensive, but it's company cheap. It's, it's, it's company, company money, right? So, so it's, uh, it's kind of cool to, uh, to make use of it. Um, uh, so uh, this, uh, with these new mock-up systems, uh, they are kind of affordable, and you could do things like that. And I, uh, it's 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 it feels very weird for me because like uh, I I have no idea why why nobody is doing this already. Uh, it's it's so fun. It's so. The, you can bring so much life to this, uh, this, uh, this moments, and uh, it's uh, it's kind of an interesting tool. Uh, so, uh, so uh, um, if you look deep into any tool that's that's uh, that's not like this, that's not Unity, right? That's not uh, something that's totally on the uh, on the uh, on the surface then you can uh, you can find also like fantastic possibilities to make life easier and generally more interesting to uh, to anyone that would uh, uh, that makes games
Here I grab a gun from his gun, uh, a, a gun from his arm, and then I shoot him. But there is this guy behind. Oh my God! Look at the hand; it sucks. <laughs> But it doesn't matter really, right? Like the the cool thing about this prototype is the distances. Uh, uh, how many of you have worked with VR at all? Hey, you you work also. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so kind of few of you you you, you played around. So uh, I will explain this. When you have a VR game, it's very easy to do VR game uh, 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 as a like a normal game, but in VR, right? But uh, actually, this is a kind of different field, and uh, a field that uh, uh, where like VR absolutely shines are the very close distances. Uh, your uh, yeah, so it's uh, if it's uh, VR shooting and uh, and your enemies are like far there, like by the wall. This is this could be VR. This could be immersive, like you do bang, 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 and you shoot a guy. This is kind of fun, but um, I kind of do it, do it in video games already, right? I shoot people in distances, right? This is this is this happens, but uh, 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 close proximity interactions are very, very, uh, very rare. And uh, they're actually uh, the most interesting thing uh, uh, in VR. Uh, so here, like, here he killed me. And that's why this replay kind of sucks. Uh, uh, but, uh, 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 but there is this feeling of you dodging the knife directly. There's a person in front of you. The person wants to kill you. This is a bad person, but he moves like a real person. So he smokes a cigarette and then flips the cigarette right in your face. And the cigarette butt is spinning and it's heading right at you. And you don't have to, um, uh, don't have to be afraid of it. That's a very beautiful situation. This is the situation like between people in those same distances, between bodies of people, uh, uh, where it's kind of convincing, right? Because like he has a hand, heads, uh, he has a full body, you can see him moving towards you. But, uh, but at the same time, um, time, time stops until you move. So you have like complete freedom. You can be, uh, you can be really intimidated by something that, uh, that uh, comes closer to you, uh, comes in, in this personal space distance. Like uh, uh, generally when doing VR, the close proximity spaces are avoided because of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, fuck up possibilities. The fuck up possibilities are endless, especially with like uh, sexual harassment uh, in VR. Things like that can happen because this is immersive technology. But, uh, uh, but if bad things can happen, that only means that good things can happen too. And, uh, and I imagine this, uh, uh, this game, this, this, uh, this idea of you being, being totally fr free and totally, uh, totally safe against all those, uh, all those uh, um, realistically, convincingly moving human bodies, this is something I find very interesting. And I would love to not to do it. Like, I would, be, I would be very happy that somebody else would be, uh, would, be, would be doing this thing, because, like, in many ways, I am the worst person to do those things. Uh, uh, like, I'm kind of a programmer. This is, this, is, uh, this, is, this is my programming. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, I, I kind of program things and, uh, and, and can make, it, make them work. But uh, building huge systems, this is, uh, this is something that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a challenge also. You probably know this challenge. It's difficult. So you have this strange idea of how things should work, and then uh, uh, and then you should, uh, and then you, you, you do it, right? But 
as it comes with ideas that nobody is doing, there may be a, uh, there may be a reason. It may be that, that uh, people that, that usually work in uh, in gaming industry, uh, uh, they have more immediate challenges. And this is like kind of uh, re rethinking how, uh, how animation, uh, how you could do animations uh, for games, right? It's, it's not like the silver bullet solution for everybody, right? But it's, uh, it's something that, um, uh, that I feel that in our case, this can kind of work. And that's, that's, uh, that's one of the ideas that nobody's doing. But we are doing it. It's kind of cool. You think, like, I decided just to show those things because, uh, because um, uh, uh, basically, it's, uh, it's very hard to convince anybody to work on a project like this. So I guess other, if I won't show it, then it may be the work will, be, uh, uh, will not be seen by people that could be actually interested in and working on a thing like that. Because I know that you can take it into places. And I have, I have many places you, you, I, I can see this, this, uh, this going. But I wonder, like, is, is, is anybody interested? You, you, you wanna, you, you're interested in doing things like that? Or like, not at all? Huh? You are doing it? Shit, I want to I wanna, I wanna hear more. I want to I wanna hear more. You probably, you probably are way, uh, way further than, uh, than we are with this. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, if you are doing this already, then we will talk. Let's go further, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, there, is, uh, there is this uh, thing called HQ Trivia. Do you know HQ Trivia? Nobody knows HQ Trivia here. It's the best game released in uh, 2000 uh, last year. Uh, uh, I, will, I will show how the, how the HQ Trivia looks like. Because um, that's a fascinating idea also connected to, uh, to the... Uh, oh shit, that's my YouTube. <laughs> um, uh, okay, uh, HQ Trivia. Nie mamy dźwięku. We don't have sound. We don't have sound. Mm -hmm. Tak, nie, nie idzie. OK. Nie, nie ma być szona. OK, so, so um, what's interesting, interesting slide is here. This is this. So, uh, it's on your phone. There is this guy. It's called, he's called Scott Rogowski. He's the host of HQ Trivia. HQ Trivia is a live trivia show. So, every day, 6 p.m., there's a show. Scott Rogowski hosts the show. It's live. And uh, you answer 12 questions. If you answer 12 questions, then all of the people playing with you, all of those people, uh, will share a cash prize. It's the simplest game ever. Like, bzz. but suddenly, somehow, uh, guys from HQ Trivia, they invented television and, uh, and nobody else did. How the fuck this happened? Currently, like, there is uh, the number on the left. This is uh, 600,000, 600k uh, people at the same time playing the game. Right? Uh, and it is a game, right? It's a trivia show mostly. So you just answer, one of, uh, uh, answer a question, you mark one of the three answers, right? Um, uh, and there's, it's, there's a cash prize, right? So it's, it's more of a, uh, it's more of the, uh, so it's more of a, it's a very simple game. But, like, I see lots of developers whining about Twitch because Twitch is taking our people away. So, uh, uh, because people want to watch someone else play game instead of play our game. And also, uh, the very progressive uh, developers in this field, like they implement some features for Twitch. Uh, 
And it works, it works interesting, like they get their communities, they get them engaged, but somehow, and for some reason, nobody in the gaming industry invented television, invented a thing like that. And that's, that's very puzzling for me. Uh, because like we do games all the time and this is the simplest of games taking just this one feature of in, of life of uh, of live gameplay and making the simplest game out of it why this doesn't didn't it uh, wasn't it created in the gaming industry that that, that got me really uh, really really puzzled my idea why this wasn't uh, created in the uh, in the gaming industry was uh, shit. I don't have a slide for that. Um, uh, my idea why wasn't this created in the gaming industry was uh, b mainly because people making games are interested in making games, and this is uh, this 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 no, this previous thing. This wasn't game enough. It didn't have like a sword or whatever. It didn't have uh, uh, whatever a game needs. It wasn't it wasn't a, a Witcher MMO uh, game, right? Uh, so so it's kind of kind of hard to get people uh, people uh, interested in uh, uh, in doing things like that. Uh, do we have audio? Do you want audio? Oh. But to, 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 today is the, there's the audio dependent fragment I want to show you. But um, if it doesn't work, then. Nie mogę, nie mogę, nie mogę spróbować. Bo jak już spróbuję. So, uh, I will just play this thing to you. And if it doesn't have sound, that uh, kind of sucks. It doesn't have sound. But there's, there's imagine me screaming there. So. Like when you're uh, when you're doing a character, uh, uh, like with this this, this mock-up stuff, uh, you are doing this in VR. But like using VR doesn't necessarily have to be uh, for a VR game. You could do other things with VR. So uh, so it's it's kind of a cool uh, indie tool to 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 make stuff. So I imagined HQ Trivia did a cool thing, right? So. And like, I, I still hear people not uh, not knowing HQ Trivia, right? So I, I'm I'm in this uh, this this position of there being a very good idea, and like people kind of don't don't get it sometimes, right? So like, there's maybe something very wrong with me. That's 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 possible, or maybe it's just like uh, this is this idea that nobody is doing. So um, uh, so if you think about HQ Trivia. It's a, a scheme works like that. You are when when I was a kid, when I was a kid, there was live television, right? And there was like a, you went home for the episode of your favorite uh, animation. Like I was watching Dragon Ball, I was watching uh, Tigrisha Maska. Tigrisha Maska is, is my my all-time favorite. Uh, so so I was watching those things, and uh, you had to be home at a certain time uh, uh, for 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 this to, to work. You were waiting for the shows. The ads are rolling before the show, and you are just this this hypnotized kid in front of a television uh, waiting for his uh, show to begin. And this is uh, this is a feel. This is this, this, this pure feeling that kind of HQ trivia catches this feeling, right? Uh, and, and that was absolutely mind blowing for me. So I was thinking, hey, maybe you could work with this feeling, right? Like with this, 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 uh, the simplest of things. So I thought um, um, you would have uh, uh, something on your screen, like uh, you would have uh, a. a you, you, that would be a mobile game, right? You would have, uh, w what could you have on a screen that's interesting? A person is kind of interesting. Like if this would be like some, something too dragony, whatever, this is kind of kind of not interesting, uh, uh, not like generically interesting for a human being. Other people, interesting. Uh, so uh, I was thinking uh, 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 this could be a person on your screen. 
and what would be the most fascinating thing that this person could be doing? You have a guy on the screen, live. What does he do to make it interesting? It's a live show. You go out and you have to improvise. You need to have uh, direct contact, contact with the audience. And what do you do to make it interesting? This is a question like this is a question of performance. This is a question like more from the uh, theater part of uh, part of life than from the corporate business co uh, part of life, right? And uh, uh, I see people in game development are generally still kind of away from those those those, those humanity stuff, those uh, uh, th those things. Uh, so, uh, what could be interesting there? I would say we would have to work with very primal emotions, right? So if this guy on your screen, he's too nuanced, he has like problems with his life or whatever, he, he tells about the story of his father, that could be cool, but instant cool, and what works is good old violence. So uh, I, was, I was thinking how this could work. And I imagine, I imagine this like this. This will also uh, launch a bit longer, so give me a second. Um. Okay, so uh, uh, so first you get a video on the internet. There's like a pissed off virtual guy, and he says that he will fuck you up. Uh, and you say, <laughs> you're a computer person, you cannot do anything for me, uh, right? But, uh, but, then you, uh, uh, but then this girl's person is very persistent, and he says that uh, he will not only like, like destroy everybody, but uh, uh, you can bring your friends, and he will fuck them up, uh, up too. And not only he will fuck them up uh, uh, like, like sequentially, one after the other, personally, he will do them all at the same time. So I imagined, okay, it's like, a, I don't know a good English word for it, but this is, this is a solówka. This is a solówka po szkole. Um, uh, uh, so I imagine like uh, me being a kid, just uh, getting a thing like that, you tune in on your, on your smartphone for a specific moment, right? Every day after school, every day 4 p.m., uh, there's, uh, there's a fight happening, and whatever happens later, shit, like, have to invent it, right? But I think there is, there is something there, and the, the general question is, uh, general game design question is, uh, how can you do... Uh, uh, live, uh, live gameplay, uh, uh, live gameplay uh, with uh, 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 live gameplay in general, right? Because, like you know, you can do a live trivia show, right? That's simple, technically. Uh, uh, but doing a live gameplay comes with lots of limitations, and uh, those are not obvious problems to solve. Uh, uh, and that's why I feel that those things are not happening in the game industry. This requires competency from an absolutely different field. Like, it's, it's, uh, it's this, uh, there's this stereotype of hashtag, like, game dev programmer, that, like, oh, we do everything. But uh, uh, when it comes to, uh, like, stuff like uh, uh, building scalable, big, uh, big, uh, uh, big uh, uh, infrastructure, to, uh, to handle lots of people at the same time with some kind of accuracy to, uh, and, and uh, at the same time people making this in infrastructure, they need to work with game designers uh, to, uh, to, uh, to make this thing happen, right? This is 
This is logistically difficult. This is a problem of placing like a proper talent in a proper room, and it's uh, uh, and finding those people. This is uh, this is uh, this is amazing. Uh, it's, it's amazing how hard it is. Uh, it, it is because I genuinely think that those are kind of that those are very interesting ideas to explore. And at the same time, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's hard to find anybody who wants to do them. It's strange. Like it's, it's always better to do something that you've done before. But we've done a, 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 a successful PC game. And if you, if, if to work more, and we like, you kind of like to work, like you need to invent stuff. And this is, this is an adventure and you never know how it ends. Job. This is this is uh, uh, this is this is another thing. This is another thing. Like uh, if this would be on the phone, how would it look like? It would look like this. Uh, yeah. And it's kind of fascinating for me that uh, uh, that um, may, may, maybe I don't know about them. I'm not 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 an expert in 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 this field. But I haven't seen a proper uh, a proper uh, uh, proper FPP gameplay on a mobile phone. It's like it's it's always such a shitty like with those virtual buttons and things. And here, like I always imagined for this game, uh, uh, for this uh, this live gameplay, that the big advantage is from all those people that came that come, like those ten thousand people circling about uh, around this guy. Very simple interface, you just swipe to move around him. Maybe you have some moments, then you can shoot something, something very, uh, very simplistic. Uh, but when he kills you, it's personal, because uh, he can grab you like individual players. Individual players, probably by the masses, you have to cheat a bit, uh, a bit like that. But when you, uh, but when you uh, uh, get smashed, by his hand, personally, or by his knife, he like, like this, and it happens live. I think this would be cool. Of course, this is this is slow slow mo. Like the real thing probably would be uh, would work a bit a bit differently. But you could work with ideas like that. It's interesting. Hmm. I would love to do a thing like that. We have a whole screenplay because you, um, uh, if you would have a live, sh live, uh, live game, then like you have to invent the story as you go. You have to uh, improvise the thing. You probably would have a script, but this would be uh, this would go in seasons. Probably the first day we just introduce the guy, uh, and uh, and he is this all-powerful motherfucker that that wants to destroy everybody. But then, uh, but he has like this force field around, and just for a second, the force field the force field goes down, and you can feel that he's afraid, and that's the end of the first episode. Come back for the uh, for the uh, come back tomorrow. And tomorrow, uh, the, the second day, we would do a, a proper fight, but he will win. The third day probably probably would be the day we retire this wrestler. We uh, we uh, uh, we kill him and we stage a poetic death for him. So this is basically uh, 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 I think about it as an interactive Dragon Ball experience where you fight with giant uh, giant monsters that want to, want, want to destroy the city or whatever. The things, the there's a lot of like moving parts in every design, and you can you can uh, you can shuffle the ideas. But I know that, 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 that the core emotion, the core emotion of like having immediate gameplay live experience, this is something that is absolutely not done by uh, by game developers. And uh, the the best game in this uh, in this sector was created by Silicon Valley people. Like they 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 uh, creators of HQ previously did did Vine, the video making app, amazing stuff. So, uh, so uh, I'm kind of. It kind of sucks that that it's not the games industry that invents uh, uh, things like that. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, if it's possible, we can always change that. So, if you if you want to chat, 
will be here. We will not only will be here uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the reminder of the day. We will also be here at the at the at the and da, 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 at the after party after party after party exit the dragons hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, exit the dragons chat up with anybody from the from the team or with me and I will give you I will give you exactly this link, and you are all invited to like like the uh, the Opium Music Club. Uh, very cool place. We personally chose we personally chose the place. We chose the bouncers. We chose the food. This is good stuff. Uh, and uh, um, uh, happening. Uh, and at this at this event, I will be very happy to like discuss all those things because like uh, this is work in progress. It's all like just raw ideas. I'm saying those ideas to you like I would be uh, saying them to a team member. Like it's it's uh, all up front. Like you don't. It's nothing hidden here. Uh, uh, and I would love to love to discuss uh, the things with you uh, at the uh, at the party. But there is one more thing happening at the party. What? <laughs> Not enough mana. Have you heard about this game? No, you haven't. It's a new thing. Completely new. It's... But you know it. It's something that everybody has done but reinvented. Not enough mana. This is a card game where you play as dueling wizards. Every each one of you is a wizard. You have cards with your spells. You can cast a fireball at your, uh, at your, at your friend. You can take away his, pit, uh, uh, his hit points with a fireball. To, to, to throw a spell, you need to read the sentence. The sentence on the card is either Latin or it's uh, Hungarian, the most difficult of all languages. But spells not only cost, uh, uh, spells not only cost, uh, uh, cost you this, this card, they also cost you mana points. And you replenish mana points by drinking magical potions. <laughs> this is so good, and we'll be doing a Not Enough Mana Invitational Tournament at the event. You are all invited. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Uh, yes, the questions are always welcome. I wouldn't ask a question publicly myself also. Like, I'm always... <laughs> but but, but you, you, you said you already, like you said, uh, you're doing similar stuff. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We love VR, but uh, I believe that this market is currently quite small for players, and I believe that this is caused by not enough proper tools. And uh, recently, when we were needing some animations, we basically uh, rediscovered what you what you just told. So <laughs> basically, why why do we not uh, what what would we even cons consider? hiring uh, mockup studio if we can record it VR. Plus, uh, we know that there is possibility to buy additional trackers and... How many are you using? Sorry? How many are you using? 
trackers? Right now, no, no. We are using, we just uh, started this project, but we have already something working. We have first recorded animations and we are mm -hmm. thinking about just releasing it at a, a plugin for Unity on Asset Store for a rather cheap price because I believe that it's, it would be useful to many, many developers including ourselves basically yeah like uh, the uh, if it's if it's without additional trackers then you have to do it with uh, with uh, ik inverse kinematics yeah, for the legs are, and that always like you could see like the ik legs that's that's always always uh, always a problem i don't like it at all but if we want to release it for a plugin that requ requiring uh, users to own trackers would be disaster. Who, yeah, exactly, who exactly. in the room own uh, VR trackers? Hands up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like nobody has them because like there's absolutely no use for them. You have to invent a use for them, and that's why it's uh, uh, why it's uh, uh, like we, we develop an internal tool. Like this is this is I I, I don't imagine uh, uh, like really releasing it. Although ah, it's always disappeared. Uh, so uh, we developed this uh, as an uh, internal tool, right? And uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> like I kind of feel what you're saying. Like if you uh, if you have those market constraints, like that uh, you want to develop it as a plugin, and that's that's the only way to do it, then like probably uh, like most interesting uh, uh, most interesting stuff can be can be uh, you can do some of them because like just there's no market for it, right? Okay, and for using markers, what would you recommend? Markers, what? Yeah, I, I mean, if we, because uh, right now we are using uh, just uh, HTC Vive. Yeah. What do you think would be would be better for internal use then? Uh, 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 Vive trackers are fine because all of the uh, all of the uh, systems uh, with animation uh, uh, need to be in place for this to work, right? Uh, so uh, you either record uh, record uh, uh, seven trackers. We have seven trackers, uh, or you record like uh, more trackers with uh, with uh, a different technology but like the, the the categories of problems are the same right um, uh, we are currently using seven trackers for uh, for for body there are inertial mod body uh, mockups rococo was very interesting like I, we did, we just gave it like a tiny spin but this is something that could uh, could really work with additional because um, uh, inertial mockups are inherently unstable when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to like uh, uh, translation uh, uh, like in uh, in space, the root motion. But uh, if you uh, if you, uh, I imagine you can stabi stabilize it with uh, with a headset. Uh, that's uh, that's additional tracking in space. So so I think that there is there is uh, a thing to be played uh, played around with uh, uh, in this uh, uh, in these things. Okay, I guess that's everything. Thank you. See you at the party.